every Christian is going to come to a point in their walk and in their ministry where they have to learn what it is to persevere. Uh, persevere through the difficulties that will happen. Maybe it'll be opposition, something of that nature. Uh, and it makes me think of David. And of course, he had been anointed to be king over Israel. Uh, he believed God for that. He knew that that was the, going to be the case for him. But there were years between when he was anointed and when he actually became king. And I think about all that time of frustration, what it must have been like for him uh, to deal with uh, knowing that he was meant to have this role and and having to just wait and persevere in what it was he was doing with his life and waiting for the time that God was going to use him. Uh, the word perseverance, as I understand it, uh, used there in the Hebrew, is a word that means staying under. Staying under. And if you think about it, for us, that means we're staying under whatever yoke God has placed on us. Uh, but it also made me think of what it is to stay under water and need a breath of air. It's like the picture of a, of a beach ball. Have you ever held a, tried to hold a beach ball under water and it's full of air? And it, the instinct, of course, for the air is to come to the surface and have the beach ball bounce up to the surface. It's so difficult. It's, you can't keep a beach ball underwater very long. Uh, and it reminds me of when I was a kid because my fam I have a big family and my parents put us all on a swim team because you could take everybody at one time, all seven of us at that point, uh, that could be dropped off at swimming and we would get our athletics taken care of that way. And so my favorite race was the 100 meter breaststroke. And, um, my parents were very involved. They didn't just drop us off at swim practice, but they were very involved with the meets. And my dad was a stroke judge. And so he would walk the length of the pool to watch the strokes and watch the turns to make sure they were, were legal turns. And, um, and so I knew my dad would be watching me while I was swimming. And in the, in the breaststroke, in a, in a hundred yard or a hundred meter race, you do a turn at 50 meters. And we're coached, uh, we were, as kids, we were coached in that turn that when you come off the wall doing breaststroke, you do something that's a real strong pull down underwater before you come up. And um, you've already done 50 meters as fast as you can go. Every person in the race is going as fast as they can go. So you get to the wall and you're out of breath. And yet you're supposed to do this turn where you stay under the water. If you watch, the Olympics, we weren't certainly Olympi Olympians by any means, but if you watch in the Olympians, uh, they, their pull down actually takes them about a, th a third of the way into the pool. And it's a long time underwater when you're already out of breath. And here I knew my dad was watching and I wanted to please my father. And so I would always try to do it right. But you know what I found out um, was that I had to do it in practice too. I had to do it daily. I had to do it in practice uh, in order to be able to do it in the race. And so this is, this is perseverance. Perseverance is to stay under where we've been placed. And to be able to do it, we have to be doing it on a daily basis, practicing it, working on it, having the breath support. And in the Christian life, uh, it's the same thing. It was the same thing for David. He had to daily and... Uh, going on, uh, knowing, living in caves, uh, uh, being, being pursued by Saul, and yet persevering and recognizing that, that he was, God still had a purpose and a plan and he could continue on. He could stay under the yoke that God had given him until the time came when he would be the king.